PNR Networks is a member of Patreon. Show your love for our shows by joining our ongoing fundraising campaign and get some fantastic perks in return. Check it out and become a Patreon sponsor. You can sign up at patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, backslash PNR Networks. And thanks for your support. This podcast is a member of the Blueberry Network. Blueberry. No E's. That's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y. Dot com. Blueberry dot com. This podcast is a proud member of the Lamb Podcasting Network. Find the network at largeassmovieblogs.com. It's Kim versus TC in the battle of the lists. My list is better. My list is better. My list is better. No, it's not. My list is better. Kim or TC, who has the better list? From Subject Cinema, this is Front Row 5 and 10 with Kim Brown and T.C. Kirkham. Hi guys and welcome to another week here on Front Row 5 and 10 brought to you by the good people that bring you Subject Cinema. That would be me and him, the me being Kim Brown. And the him being T.C. Kirkham. Hello everybody. Hi. Yike, where'd that whistle come from? I don't know. It's the time we do all these goofy entertainment lists for you. We hope you like the show. If you like to yep. contribute list ideas, front row at pnrnetworks.com. And uh, check out all of our other shows as well. We'll talk about those later. Okay. Okay. How was your week? We missed Subject Cinema this week. Uh, if you're listening to this day and date, which is January 18th, 2018, um, we missed Subject Cinema this past week because... Uh, let's just face it. I was in the last minute of editing and pulling my hair out, getting our new, our new uh, project up on mm-hmm. on YouTube, which went up today. It's called Manhattan Hammerdown. If you haven't seen it, it's a, 12, a 10th anniversary Cloverfield tribute, and uh, in, everybody from PNR Networks is involved, and it runs 15 minutes longer than the movie. <laughs> Yeah. It's really scary. But there's no shaky cam. No. So No, there, but there is that. AM ra- staticky AM radio. Yeah. And EAS alerts. And you, go check it out. It's at yeah. ManhattanHammerdown.com. It's, Our, a, it's a real labor of love. I'm happy that I was part of it. It's really great. It, it actually turned out to, I think, I'm so proud of everybody. It just was a ra- really yeah. big group effort. And today, of course, as we're recording this and putting this up, is the 10th anniversary of Cloverfield's release. And that's mm-hmm. what we're trying to aim for. And five months of hard labor and... And everything, getting it done, and yeah, we definitely hope you'll go check hours it out. At least of editing, and it's just been yeah, crazy. Please, but please go check it out and leave comments, even if you know, just an email or whatever. like, share, send, like, share, uh, like, like, share, subscribe. subscribe. There you go. And to the people who made Cloverfield, please don't sue. No, um, they're not going to. We're not doing this out of no, malicious. We're not making. I mean, we'd like to get some Patreon sponsors out of it, maybe, but we're not out this to make no, money. This we're is doing just a this fun for lo- the love of art. Anyway, yes. our top ten favorite musical acts of the 1980s. Yes. <laughs> that nobody else remembers. No, 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 well, no. I have quite a few on my list that people will remember. They're just not popular anymore. Some of them yeah. are still making music. Others have disappeared out of the music industry. But it's going to be fun. It is. I think. What was your criteria other than bands Cam wanted to sleep with? Uh... <laughs> Um, uh huh. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. We're gonna. Have, this is gonna be one show. We're not gonna tie on any of them. Nope. Because I'll be honest, I have no heavy metal bands on my. I'm a band, woman. Honest. I have needs. Don't judge me. <laughs> and this was the '80s when my when my sex drive finally decided to catch up with the rest of me and went into drive. Right. The drive part. Are these know? names that people will recognize? Some of them are. Um, some of them probably aren't. And, and then, some, but of I, some of them you could probably look up on Spotify or Amazon yeah. Music or yeah. whatever and try or to find Wikipedia them. Or Wikipedia them. Or, yeah. you could, or some of them you might be like, oh my lord, I haven't heard that name. You know, I haven't heard that band in, you know, years since Reagan was in office, you know, or whatever. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, I get to start. 
Um, I do have runners up because you do. Yes, good. I I'm do. not the only Amazingly one. Amazingly enough. By the way, I want to apologize real quickly for whatever happened to the show last week. We didn't notice it till after we'd done recording, so we're going to do things a little bit differently this week in an attempt to make sure it doesn't happen again. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, I actually did have more of a criteria than people Kim wanted to bang, okay? Okay. It's, it's a little, <laughs> not much more, but, um, my criteria was that they had to have songs that I still think of. And they mm-hmm. had to be bands that stuck out in my head for one reason or another, or they were bands, that, at least in one case, I was actually lucky enough to see. Um, my top, my, my runners up are, uh, Ugly Kid Joe. Who everybody remembers from their yeah, but they didn't really come in until the nineties. Well, so. no, that doesn't count. Everything um, about you wasn't a hit till ninety two. Uh, enough is enough. Um, Another one which, that didn't hit till the nineties. Okay. And um, Bullet Boys. Okay, I like them. I've heard them. Uh, Smooth up in you was probably I'd say they're probably their biggest hit. Family um, Show. It's the name of the song. It's a terrible write it. title, Family Show. <laughs> um, okay, so getting to my number 10, and this is one of those, oh my lord, I don't believe someone else remembers this band if you're out there. Um, at least on these shores. My number 10 is Loudness. Um, <laughs> shut up. Um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound racist. But the idea of Japanese heavy metal still cracks me up. I've seen some of their videos. They're, they were out there. I mean, they were good, but they were out there. Wow. Well, proving that, you know, anybody can rock hard enough <laughs> if they want to. Um, Loudness was a Japanese heavy metal band who sang in English. Um, and I thought they were terrific. The first time I ever heard any of their <laughs> stuff, I was like, this is... Their videos were screwed up, though. You it, have to admit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, this is... Le-. Well, that was another thing that would put stuff on my list of things that would be interesting to me. Would it piss off my parents? If that got <laughs> checked... If, if that got no, change, checked change, off... Change you know, that. What? Will it piss off your father? Will it piss off my father? Yeah, your mother couldn't yeah. have cared less as long as oh, you were happy and they weren't... Yeah. weren't like dropping the f bomb every five seconds, your mom would have well, been fine. Well, as long with it. as you know, as long as it wasn't some band singing like you know, "Kill Your Mother for the Love of Satan" or something like that, I don't think she had a problem with anything else. I do think she was a little like you know, they're wearing more makeup than you do, you yeah. know, a oh, few well, times. Yeah. But mostly, yeah. If it was Will listening to this music piss off my father, if that check mark was there, then then you know, I really was interested. Um, but. Loudness had, uh, I think their biggest hit in this country was probably Crazy Nights, uh, which got a lot of rotation on MTV. Um, but very little airplay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, radio airplay, no. Uh, there were some other songs. That I, I really was a fan of Rock and Roll Gypsy. I like that song. Um, SDI, In My Dreams. They, I liked them. I thought they were great. So my number 10, Loudness. My runner's up. I have six of them, and two of them are still active, but they haven't had hits for a while. I loved Alphaville. Did you? Do you guys remember Alphaville? They had a monster hit called Forever Young, which has been a hit three times with three different remixes over the last 20 years. Yeah. I like the original one, which came out in 1985. Um, Danny Wilson, which is a band from uh, Sc- Island, Ireland or Wales, and the leader of which is did all the music for Sing Street, which is just fantastic. Um, Cock Robin. Does anybody remember Cock Robin? They had a great album. They only lasted once. They had a great song called When Your Heart Is Weak. I get yelled at for a band name and, you, and a band I album. I love them and the album was great. And hmm. and the all sports band, which was um, an attempt to do a village people like group with different sports. They they were on bandstand once. They had a great song called I'm Your Superman, which I loved. And... Um, but the concept was kind of wicked. The two that the are still around... The concept is kind of stupid. Yeah, it is. The con- the, the two that are still around um, that I liked, that I considered but didn't put on my top ten, are Sheena Easton, who doesn't perform, doesn't record much anymore, but she still performs. She does mm-hmm. Vegas and stuff every now and then. And Nick Kershaw. Nick Kershaw never got the love in this no, country that no. he deserved. He was magnificent. Still performing, still out there doing stuff. All the time, and I loved him. My number 10, and I told you she was going to be on my list last week. Mm-hmm. My number 10 was this amazingly um, talented woman <laughs> who had a couple of hits, one big and one minor, that still stick in my head. And if you were around in the 80s and you don't remember Two of Hearts, there's something wrong with you. 
Um, I don't see how you couldn't remember it. They played. I know. Death. Number ten, Stacy Q. Um, Stacy actually got into um, preaching as she got older. Really? So she's actually an ordained minister now, but she still performs and still sings. But she hasn't had a recording contract for a while. She mm-hmm. did some acting. She appeared as a character named Cinnamon uh, on several episodes of The Facts of Life that yeah. year. Um, and she was good. But Two of Hearts, you know, everybody loved that song. The video was hot. You could not get away from that song. I know you didn't love it, but you couldn't get away from it. I everybody it. heard it. Two I would have hearts. I wouldn't two say everybody loved one. it. Um, let's let's, she let's was not awesome. go crazy. She now. was awesome. And I miss her, and I wish she'd come back. Stacy Q, number 10. Okay. Uh, number nine on my list is uh, a glam band that unfortunately never got as much airplay as other groups like Poison and, and you know, groups like that. Uh, they're called Pretty Boy Floyd. I think these guys were friggin' amazing. Um, for one thing, they looked like, you know, the typical rock bad boy, leather pants, high hair, tons of makeup, and which meant they looked nothing like any of the guys I was stuck <laughs> going to school with. So I was like, yeah, I, yeah. W- I want that. That's what I want mm-hmm. right there. Um, their biggest hit, I think, would probably be uh, I Only Want to Be With You. I think that was the name of it. And that's not the um, Bay City Rollers song. No, no. Just, um, just to clarify, it's not no, the I same wanna song. Be with, I want to be with you. That was the name of it. Um, they also did a, a really beautiful song. and It's called Cry. And it's so incredibly moving, very emotional song. Um, I just thought they were terrific. And they also did a, um, the, the, uh, there's one other song I want to bring up real quick. It's called Rock and Roll is Gonna Set the Night on Fire. And this was just so 80s. It was so perfect. I thought well, they were, a lot of these bands are so 80s. Yeah, I thought they were great. Um, my number nine, <laughs> Pretty Boy Floyd. My number nine was a British import, I think, that never really took off. And and so they they kind of split up after their first two albums, although they came back together in 2013 for a new album, which was great. Anybody else remember Johnny Hates Jazz? They had a monster number Shattered one hit Dreams? called yeah. Shattered Dreams and a great, even better follow-up called I Don't Want to Be a Hero. Loved those two songs. Loved the album. And, of course, whenever that happened with, with, uh, with me... Um, Greg Guidry, who I should have put on this list, that comes to mind. Love the album, and then they didn't do anything else that mm-hmm. you could get a hold of. Or Jim Photoglow, another one I didn't put mm-hmm. on the list. Um, I, I wonder, loved. I wonder if that's where uh, Goldust got the name of his uh... Shattered Dreams Productions. I kind of <laughs> doubt it. Um, no, you never. Know. But you could never get away, you couldn't get away from the song. It was all over the radio. It was a great little kind of pseudo dance boppy breakup song and it was fun yeah. typical 80s song mm-hmm. so i don't want to be a hero was a anti-war song that just blew my mind and i'm i'm i wish they were still around my number nine johnny hates jazz look them up on spotify they have great music okay okay uh number eight on my list is another glam band surprise what a shock uh yeah most of these are most going- of them are going to be she was heavy yeah. into glam bands what? what do you mean was? Well, they're not around anymore. Well, I mean, mo- they don't have new ones coming out no, all the time. The ones that are still out there, they're like, around. like Europe, who have lost their look. Um, what? Even you said Joey, Joey not, doesn't I'm look like that. I'm not admitting that. I'm not admitting I said that. I, I, I deny that. It wasn't me. It was my <laughs> evil twin. Um, anyway, moving on. Uh, number eight is a band called Nitro. Uh, Nitro had a really awesome hook a lot of bands had a you know a hook a gimmick however you that's a word. name nobody's gonna know I yeah I, know. I don't know them, so. i know um well i sent you one of their i sent yeah you i know the song they, they did too, an but amazing cover of uh ted nugent's cat scratch fever uh the lead singer how can you um, do an amazing cover of what is essentially a terrible song <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. I've always dokey. hated that song. Oh. Anyway, well, when your when your lead singer can hit notes that literally could shatter glass, which he proved because the lead singer appeared in an episode of MythBusters. And oh, did, that guy. Yep. Oh, okay. And did Holy shatter? Hell, yeah, he did. Finally. Yeah. yeah. It took him um, a while, but he did. Yeah, he did it though. Um, <laughs> they they I don't I wouldn't call them scream core because I mean he although he hit, could hit. Some incredibly high notes. There was a lot of fast guitar playing. Um, I mean, to give you an example of most of their stuff, they had a, a song called Hot Wet Dripping with Sweat. Um, and yes, that is pretty much what it sounds like it is. 
Um, so my number eight, Nitro. So yes, I know Glam's <laughs> not as popular as it was, but it still lives on in my no, heart. No, I love Glam. I love some Glam bands yeah. too. You know, and, I, in, and in my dreams. I mean, people don't realize Guns N' Roses qualifies as a Glam band from well, that's how they from started early on. Yeah, yeah, but they still were a Glam well, band yeah. when they started. Yeah. And Brett Michaels is still out there, yeah. and you know, yeah. touring and everything. Yeah, and it all lives on in my dreams. Uh-huh. My dark. Scary. Not going there. Number eight on my <laughs> list is a guy who music. had a monster hit um, with a theme from a big hit movie and a few other minor hits, but never really got the the um, the the attention. Respect. Well, it's respect. I think that he should have because I always loved his stuff. I think he's a tremendously talented vocalist and songwriter way better than one of his contemporaries Michael Bolton they both started around at the same time Michael started in rock too but John Parr deserved better credit than he ever got mm. his his monster hit St. Elmo's Fire from from the movie of the same name yeah overshadowed everything else the guy did naughty naughty blame it on the radio uh two hearts from from American Anthem he had a whole bunch of great songs, and I, I just never quite understood why he never found that following. He was good looking, he was great on the guitar, he was a great singer. I think people got burned out from... Maybe Nan so, but I got burned out on Material Girl, and Madonna was still having hits 20 years later. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I mean, I just think he got the shaft. He was a great performer. I especially... Uh, loved Blame It on the Radio, which was from his third album, Running the Endless Mile. Really terrific stuff on there. Nobody heard it. They didn't even touch it, even though St. Elmo's Fire had only been a hit a year earlier. Mm-hmm. And and he deserved better than he got. And if you get a chance to check him out, I think some of his stuff is probably out there on Amazon or Spotify. Mm-hmm. He's got some great classics out there that nobody's heard, and they should. Number eight, John Parr. Okay. Number seven on my list is a band that had one really big hit in this country. Unfortunately... Um, they had some problems later on, you know, out of a complete accident, you know, a terrible thing to happen. My number seven is Steelheart. Uh, Love them. They were yeah, great. Awesome, they were great. Awesome band. Uh, that guy could sing like yeah, you would not believe. Um, the lead singer, Mike Metchie. But again, that, yeah. early 90s, not really 80s. Well... You didn't go bar back far enough, well, but that's okay. <laughs> Mike Metchevec had a voice from God. Yeah. Um, I'll Never Let You Go is an amazing yeah. song. Awesome wow. song. Um, there's other great, Everybody You Loves Eileen, Gimme Gimme. Those are awesome songs. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, Mike was injured in an accident. Uh, I believe he was struck by some stage, um, mm-hmm. stage, you know, like, Rafters or whatever. Could you not do that, Sorry. please? Sorry. Flashing her light in my eyes. Um, you know, <laughs> stage stuff. And he was severely injured. He came back from it. So that's obviously a good thing. But that definitely, you know, put a dent in their, in their mm-hmm. high profile, you know, look for a while. I always liked them. I thought they were amazing. I'm glad he came back from that injury. I think that he's, a, you know, incredibly brave person. So my number seven is Steelheart. Yeah, I re- they're one of the bands that you adore that I really liked. Mm-hmm. We played them a lot on um, Edge of the Blade, which was a metal show I used to host on DiscJockey.com about 20 years ago. <laughs> and and uh, we had a lot of fun with their stuff. And uh, that you gave me that song once, mm-hmm. and I, I just fell in love with it. Um, my number seven, this woman never got the attention she deserved. And again, like John Parr, she put out some really good stuff in the in the mid 80s she had one big hit and it happened to be because of who she was singing it with the same as rockwell with michael jackson oh mm-hmm. uh, somebody's watching me would never have been a big hit without michael jackson on it but night or, moves or whoever sang that song with the Bee Gees. uh who what? i can't think of the name of the damn song now. emotion uh, no that was just yeah. samantha sang they just did the backup vocals. yeah, but that, but yeah, yeah. But the, most people think that's a Bee Gees song marilyn martin had the fortunate uh or unfortunate circumstance of having her first big hit be a duet with Phil Collins called Separate Lives. And of course, Phil Collins was everywhere. Her album came out about eight months later and stiffed, and it's a damn good album. Uh, Night Moves, one of my favorite songs of the late 80s. She was just unbelievable. She is now a realtor. She got out of the business and became a realtor. That's so. That's like Tony DeFranco did, mm-hmm. who's gotten rich on his real estate stuff. Yeah. But she has recently come back in the studio recording gospel music 
I'd like to get some of that. I'm going to have to check it out and see if I can find it because I didn't know she was still singing and I'm really glad to hear that because her voice, you can take all those raspy voiced singers from back then. Like, I love Bonnie Tyler. Don't get me wrong. She's great. And I love, um, uh, Cindy Lauper and then all those guys. Nicks, but there was just that. something about Marilyn Martin that just set chills down my spine. I loved her. My number seven, Marilyn Martin. Okay. Uh, number six on my list is actually this had this band had several big hits. I mean, unfortunately, they're not really you don't really hear very much of them anymore. I I know they came back in two thousand eight for an album. I'm not sure what they're doing now. Mm-hmm. Um, my number six is White Lion, um, and White yeah. Lion was definitely one of those bands that Kim wanted to bang the lead singer really, <laughs> really, 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 really badly. Um, when you consider that their biggest hit was a song about child abuse, When the Children Cry, I, which mm-hmm. was a bigger hit than, than Wait, which was also a big hit. Yeah, Wait, um, was, Wait was got a lot of airplay. That's kind of icky. Tell Me got a lot of airplay. <laughs> I don't know. I think when, well, no, when the this Children Cry... This is me cr- giving her a hard time. No, it isn't, because when the Children <laughs> Cry came out, it was obviously they're talking about the plight of, of exploited and abused children. And I thought that was really beautiful. I loved that song. That song was awesome. And you know how many girls probably were like, A whole bunch of songs with that theme hit right in that one year. There was that one, Luca by Suzanne Vega and Dear Mr. Jesus by Power Source. So you had this guy who had this beautiful singing voice in Mike Tramp who was, you know, super handsome and came off as totally sensitive and caring about kids and, you know, being this really sensitive guy. (laughs) Maybe meanwhile, he was I'm, really a sensitive guy. Meanwhile, I'm going to school with a bunch of neck, you know, you know, neck. Uh, well, you up, were no, you, know, you were in college shoulder. by the time they hit. Babe. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You can't blame the high school kids on that. You were in college no, by I the time they hit. No, I was in college by the time they hit. But they, <laughs> believe me, there were no guys in my school that looked like him. Yeah, I'm sure. I would have noticed that. Trust me. <laughs> um, I thought they were great. I thought they were fantastic. I also want to bring up another song, real quick. A song called "Little Fighter." Which was um, about a, a boat that was um, was a Greenpeace boat, which I thought before Greenpeace went, you know, kind of off the rails. <laughs> but um, I, I like, I mean, that's only my opinion. Yeah. Of what it's worth. I, I thought they were fantastic. My favorite song is probably Wait. I, I yeah, love that song. Yeah, I love Wait. Wait was um, a great song. So my number six, White Lion. And you know how many girls probably broke up with their boyfriends because they were all like, oh, he's so sensitive and everything. Why can't you be like that? I hate you. <laughs> My number six um, is going to be one of those. I'm going to play name that tune or name that person right now okay. to see if you can remember. You probably won't. They probably won't. But when I say what it is, you'll know it. Um, the team of Shannon Rubicom and George Merrill were a big songwriting team. They wrote... Con- you know, big hits for Whitney Houston and a number of other acts in the 80s. But do you remember the name they performed under as a team, as a duo? No. <laughs> that was easy. Yeah. Um, I don't know why they never took off. They put out two great albums of soft pop about four years apart. The first one was in 82 or 83 and spawned a minor hit called Oh Girl. And then in '87, um, they released the second album. Billy Vera? No, no. 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 In '87, they released an album um, that just went meteoric with its first single, the number one smash, "Waiting for a Star to Fall." The band was they were called Boy Meets Girl as as a duo. Those two albums are two of my favorite albums from the '80s. I'm into soft pop. You never liked it. Nope. But waiting for a star to fall, I, I hear it every now and then on some like store. Yeah. S- s- and it never fails to make me smile. I loved that and you song. Go, oh my God, I'm old. I <laughs> love that song. Waiting for a star to fall was one of the greatest hits of the late 80s. And, and okay. that, they were responsible for it. They continue, although they're no longer married. They are still friends and still write together occasionally and do great stuff. And I, That's awesome. I loved Boy Meets Girl. Check out, if you can find them, check out their stuff. Oh, Girl was a great song. deserved to be a bigger, bigger hit than it was. Okay. And Waiting for a Star to, start to Fall was just amazing. All right. Oh, Girl, uh, uh, Boy Meets Girl, number six on my list. Okay, we're at the halfway point on my list. And just, do, to, do, do, do. just to prove that not every band on my list is someone that I wanted to screw... Um, as family show, honestly, bang, I'll get away with. Okay. I could have said something else. 
Um, I won't, though. No, you uh, won't. No, it's not that these guys weren't handsome. They were good looking in their own way, but they just looked a little bit scruffier. And they were a little bit harder and, you know, that kind of deal. And I occasionally like it scruffy and hard. Okay. Anyway, family show, I know. Uh, number five is Kicks. I, and it's right, just spelled right, just like the cereal. I never understood how they did that and didn't get sued, but anyway. Um, they were a lot, you know, they were edgier, they were a little grittier. I wonder if it's the same kicks that Mikey likes. That's life. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. And sorry. you're a dork. I'm sorry. Um, they you're were, right. I, oh, geez, I'm getting old. That's, that was life, wasn't it? Yep. Okay, anyway. And yes, you are. Oh, shut up. Oh, shut up. Go on. <laughs> I think probably the biggest hit they had was their their ballad "Don't Close Your Eyes," mm-hmm. which is a, which is an anti suicide song, and that's great. There were a rash of those too around the same time. Yeah, well, because there was a rash there of was, teen yeah. suicide, there was, you know, yeah. which was ironically getting blamed on heavy metal. Um, <laughs> but I like. There's a ton of songs. I could sit here and rattle off a ton of songs that they do that I love. Mm-hmm. You know, "Cold Blood," "Piece of the Pie," "Boomerang." And uh, the song that I want to use for my other show, it's a song called No Ring Around Rosie, which is an awesome song. They were fantastic. I just loved their sound. I still listen to them all the time. So my number five, Kicks. Uh, yeah, that they, they were good. I like them. Uh, my number five is about as far away from that as you can get. <laughs> And yet, even though here in America he was a one-hit wonder, in Europe he was not. He had several big hits. I think I know who this And continue to be, oh? I think I do. Well, we'll see. Uh-huh. He continues to record all the time, but he never really has, you know, he's, he's, he plays regular places in Europe and various places all uh-huh. the time. Uh-huh. And, and say what you want to about the guy. He was just really charismatic. My number five, Taco. That's not where I No, I didn't think so. Okay, Taco okay. Atkins, as his full name, was a one-hit wonder with his remake of Putting on the Ritz in 1983 mm-hmm. or 84, thanks to the uh, overplayed the, video oh on MTV. Oh, my God, they're playing this video um, again on uh, MTV. I have a number of his later albums that mm-hmm. I found on eMusic, and they're phenomenally good. Mm-hmm. I love his cover of La Vie and Rose, which was yes, just fantastic. Yes, that is really good. I like his cover of Singing in the Rain. Yeah. I like oh, that. He's an amazing vocalist yeah. and never really good. I mean, yeah, but La Vie and Rose, it's, it is beautiful. The problem mm-hmm. for him was that that type of music... Got, he kind of got beat to it because at the time that came out, Sam Harris was making a name for himself on Star Search doing the same stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and I forgot him too. And, 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 uh, ended up becoming a major Broadway star and everything uh-huh. in the, in the process. And Taco did the same kind of music. But he, I mean, some of his later stuff is really good. And you, if you've not heard him other than putting on the Ritz, you should check him out. Yeah. Number five on my list. Taco. The, the problem is if who he did gets, you think I was talking about? I thought you were talking about Lamal. No. Um, the problem is if he gets discovered, like rediscovered again, Taco, it'll be by like all these hipsters that think it's <laughs> and I hate both. Those Seriously, terms. find really his cover of La Vie and Rose. It's amazing. Okay. Number four is really high on my list because I loved this act and the fact that they just. I don't know why they didn't catch on. They had an amazing sound. They were pretty good looking. Um, my number four is a band called Roxanne. And yeah, if, I like them too. If you gave me by them, them, I like yeah. a lot. And if you guys have never heard of them, don't feel bad. Um, I don't. To be perfectly honest, I don't know how I found out about them. It might have been reading Metal Edge. I don't remember where it was. Oh, I miss Metal but, Edge. We uh, found a lot of good music in Metal Edge. I, I found a lot of people to stare at. Now I depend on Paste online and a few other places um, to discover new good stuff. So it's you know, that's really how great. I found a lot of bands that I listened to was was reading Metal Edge and being like, oh, he's cute. Oh, they're hot, you know, and stuff like that. Yes, and then she'd I buy would. the tape and never listen to it. Well, uh, yeah, either that or I would listen to it and think very bad things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Roxanne had this really cool sound, and they I just really liked them. Um, the one song that they did that just really... I don't know what it was about this song, because I'd never been in the relationship that was described in the song. It's a song called It's Not the Same. And it's there's just something about that song that I just love. I love it to pieces. <laughs> um, they also did a cover of uh, Play That Funky Music, which was a little bit... Yeah, I was like, loved their cover of that. It was okay, good. Okay, that's different. Well, so was Vanilla Ice. I liked it, too. It's one of the few things I like by him. 
Um, it was a fun cover. Anyway. Uh, my number four, Roxanne. If you can find their stuff anywhere, definitely seek it out. Just, okay. Just, you know, because they were really cool. 180 degrees away from that. All right. <laughs> number four, I'm sorry. You can get yell at me because I was in my 20s when I first heard of them, and I, I can't help it. I liked what I heard. Oh, no. But they are the perpetual band that never gets old, and they were fantastic, especially in the era that featured Robbie Rosa and Ricky Martin. Number four, Menudo. You can laugh about it. You can you can scream about it. You but can that era from 1984 to 1987, which included Robbie Rosa first and then both Robbie and Ricky, Ricky Martin, they did some dynamite stuff in English, uh, including the theme from Cannonball Run, Can't Like a Cannonball. They had a great hit called uh, Hold Me, which was always on Nick Rocks. Mm. And there was some terrific stuff which, on and that And they album. also ran the living hell out of that video again once Ricky Martin grew up and became a mega yeah. star. And of, yeah, and of course, Ricky Martin, well, Robbie is too in Spanish countries. He's huge too. Mm -hmm. But the two of them have stayed connected as friends and as producers. Robbie co-wrote some of Ricky's biggest hits, including La, um, La Bamba, B-O-M-B-A, and, and also Cup of Life and a number of other things. They are, they're, they're a great team. There were also members, Roy Rosello, Charlie Masso, um, who else was in there? Ricky Melendez when they first started, and then Ray, uh, Ray Acevedo filled in when Ricky, Mar Ricky Melendez left. And they were, they were good. They did some great stuff, some of which did not chart in America, but they did get regular airplay on Nick Rocks. They showed up all the time on Dance Party USA. By that point, that was the era with Sergio Gonzalez and Ruben Gomez. And and they were they were fun. I love You and Me All the Way, which is the first English song that Ricky Martin ever recorded. And it was terrific. Number four, Menudo. Okay. Okay, number three on my list, this is also going for the more scruffy, harder looking bands. Uh, is a band called Dirty Looks. I just, the first time I heard this stuff, I was like, ooh, this is kind of sleazy and kind of, you know, kind of back alley and kind of, I like it. You know, the, I was like, this is going to piss my family off. And it's, you know, it's sex. Did you send me anything by them? I don't know. I don't remember. Um, you know, it's sex and rock and roll and partying and, and having a good time. the band only Cam has heard of. You know, and... <laughs> I liked it. I mean, they had some really good songs. Um, cool from the Wire, Tokyo, uh, Oh Ruby. All right, yeah, um, you did. You sent me Tokyo. I remember that one. Okay, yeah. yeah so I did. Hear I some just of that. really liked their stuff. It, I, and I don't know why they didn't catch on in this country because they had a really. It was it was a hard rock sound, but it wasn't like completely in your face metal. But it wasn't like soft or anything like that. They didn't. They weren't like a lot of. They didn't do a lot of ballady stuff. I I thought they were great. I thought they just had a really kind of we're here and we're gonna play sound, and I really liked that. Mm -hmm. So my number three, Dirty Looks. My number three was one of the most under underrated bands or duos of all time. They got stuck in the wake behind the the massive publicity machine that was Wham. George Michael and, and Andrew Ridgely were just knocking everybody out of the way. But I adore Go West. They were from there on my number three on my list. Mm -hmm. Go West, uh, first album came out in 1985, um, and it was self-titled. They had a minor hit called We Close Our Eyes. And another song on the album, Don't Look Down, would be added to their second album as well in a remix. That also barely charted. It peaked at number 40. But their album, Dancing on the Couch, which is their second album, is one of my all-time favorite albums. I mean, of all time. It's terrific. Not only is Don't Look Down, the sequel on there, it has a great song called From Baltimore to Paris, which was a hit everywhere around the world except the U.S., of mm -hmm. course. And a lot of other great songs. Chinese Whispers is great, too. And, and there's just all kinds of great stuff. They finally hit national prominence with a song you could not get rid of, from the movie Pretty Woman, a song called King of Wishful Thinking. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my, that was a great song. But it was nowhere near the quality of their other albums. And right. I'm like, they still do perform together occasionally. Um, I think, actually, I think that might not be true anymore. 
I don't remember whether it was one of them or one of Naked Eyes that passed away uh, a few years ago. I Very young. The guy from Naked Eyes did pass away. Yeah, yeah so, but them, yeah. I, I, uh, I hope that Go West continues to do these little reunions every now and then because they're just awesome. I love them from the beginning. I have all of their albums. They're terrific. And if you like dance pop and smooth romantic ballad of the voice of Richard Drummy, the lead singer. Um, Did they do a song called Tenderness or am I thinking of somebody else? Tenderness was General Public. Oh, okay. Sorry. But yeah, it was around the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, it, it, all their stuff is on, on Spotify. I listen to it all the time. I still love it. Go find them. Go West, number three. Okay. The the band at my number two spot... This is going to be I the shortest think, show we've done in a long time. I think some people <laughs> might be like, what the hell is this doing on your list? Because they were, you know, they had a huge hit. Well, that you know, doesn't when, matter if they did have a huge hit. But can you honestly say, when was the last time you heard of Extreme? Uh, yes, Extreme has disappeared. But again, they're yeah. from the 90s. Not completely. Um, well, the first album might have the first squeaked album, in in 89. The first album, which in my opinion... <laughs> is great. Is awesome. They're awesome. I All mean, of their albums think, are awesome. You say extreme to people, and people who know music are going to be like, oh yeah, the band that did more than words and wholehearted. And not to take anything away from the guys <laughs> who are from up here... Shout out to the local boys. We both um, met Gary Sharon. He's yes. a super sweet guy. Yeah, he's just awesome. Um... Unfortunately, he couldn't recapture the magic with Van Halen. No. That was a shame because he really would have... He fit great with the vocal, but they didn't fit well together no, back no. behind hey, the scenes. It's their loss. It is their loss. But the thing is, the, um, Extreme's first album, which is a self-titled album, my friend Stacy and I... Hey, Stacy, We wore that album out in her car. What's an the, album, Daddy? The tape. What's a tape, mommy? Shut up. <laughs> we wore that sucker out in her car, just driving, just tooling around and listening to music. And just that was such an amazing album. It was. It had Play With some, Me is a great song. Is that from the first or the second album? Which one? Play With Me. Uh, Play With Me is from the first album. Yeah, yeah. I love that song. Um, that song Play With riot. Me, Kid Ego, which <laughs> I do not understand why Kid Ego wasn't a bigger hit. It was too heavy And th- for the there's time. one song that I really want to bring up, because this, how this song was not picked up by people who want to be a little more modern in their faith, mm-hmm. I will never understand. It's a song called Watching Waiting, mm-hmm. and it's about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And I know some people just went, what? Yeah. But it's... You didn't get that many from, from much from heavy metal except uh, Striper, who was like right. a heavy metal Christian I mean, there band. are there are Christian heavy metal bands out there, but this was just one song, and it hits you right between the eyes. It is so powerful and so beautiful and so incredibly heartfelt and amazing. And I've never understood why more modern churches didn't pick that up. And, and go with it because it was such an incredible song. I just love them. I love all their stuff. I mean, even their later stuff on like an album like Three Sides to Every Story and stuff like I that. I love Three Sides for Every Story. It got trashed by the critics, but it's got some really great stuff on it. Yeah. Especially Rest in Peace, which was the only big hit off of right. it. Right. I just, to me, there's only one sentence that describes Extreme, Too Hip for the Room. Yeah, the fourth album also didn't, wasn't you know, that good. They so. were just. Too hip for the room. Yeah. That's a shame. My number two, Extreme. My number two is a guy that you probably won't recognize his name, but you're going to recognize the two groups he was associated with. I'll get to those in a minute. He's still active as a producer and a songwriter, but we don't see him very much. He still performs occasionally, but um, not much. And it, it's it's the music world's loss because he was an amazing vocalist, uh, almost Prince style. And, and I mean, he was fantastic. His name is Ish Ledesma. I don't know if you know him, the name. He, when he did solo material in the in the mid '80s, went simply by Ish. But he's best known as the lead singer from the late '70s band Foxy, which had a big hit with "Get Off" and a second minor hit with "Hot Number," and as the lead singer of OXO, which had a monster hit in '82 called "Whirly Girl." Mm-hmm. I love this guy's voice. I have been in love with Ishla Desma's voice since I first heard it when he did Foxy. When he's with Foxy. <laughs> Excuse me. But his solo album on this corner, which came out in 86 or 87, um, got no attention. It was, cr- the critics loved it. 
but it got no attention. And that is, by I, my honest truth, is on my top 20 albums of all time. Mm-hmm. Holy Night should have been a monster hit. It's it's a very uh, Prince sounding vocals and style. I just thought he was amazing. I still do. Ish, if you ever hear this, please go back into the studio. I miss your voice like you would not believe. He was terrific, and and hopefully you can find some of his stuff on Spotify. Not all of it's there. The solo stuff, only four of the songs are there. But um, it's worth checking out. Ish Ledesma, number two on my list. Okay. So this should be interesting. I I really don't know who your number one's going to be. Okay. We did agree after using it as an example last week, that we would neither one include Glass Tiger. Yeah. <laughs> because that's just mean. <laughs> Don't forget me when I'm gone, and then we did. Anyway. Yeah. Because, you know, that's just mean. Even though they did have another top ten hit called Someday. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I might be psychotic, but I'm not cruel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your number one? My number one is a band from England... That unfortunately never quite got the airplay in America. Another band I found out about probably through Metal Edge because one look at their di- one look at their the the first album I got, which was called Young and Crazy, and you'd go, "Yep, this is the band she'd go for." It was a band called Tiger Tales. <laughs> um, Tiger Tales. Actually, Tales, I kind of had a suspicion yeah. they were on there somewhere. Tiger Tales were a <laughs> glam. Band. They were glam to the max the way Kiss is makeup to the max. (laughs) Ten foot letters, screaming (laughs) neon green, glam band. You know, they were, and I loved it. I mean, their songs were raunchy, they were raucous, they were loud, there was lots of guitar work, a lot of strutting and posturing and hey baby, let's go get it on right now kind of stuff. And I loved it. Absolutely loved it with, with, um, some some really great songs like Love Bomb Baby and uh, Young and Crazy and um, She's Too Hot. And I want to bring up a song that is so tiny, you might actually miss it. It's off of their first album. It's, there's, it's a little guitar piece called Ballerina. There's no vocals or anything. It's just a little guitar piece. And the first time I heard it, I came to like a dead stop. I was like, wow. I mean, you just, you got your ears blown off by all this stuff before it, and then you get this really beautiful, really melancholy little piece, and it's like, and then we're back to rocking again. I'm like, (laughs) did I just imagine that? Oh, no, wait, it's on the liner notes, so it must be there. Uh, I don't, my auditory hallucinations usually aren't that good, Um, but... I loved them. I thought they were amazing. They were just loud and sexy and raucous and in your face about it. And they, you know, had high hair and tight leather pants. So <laughs> sign me right the hell up. I know. Uh, my number one, Tiger Tales. Okay, my number one. You actually did pick it out, but you picked it out too soon. I, I'm... um. I'm an enormous fan of this gentleman, and he's gotten the shaft so many times, it's scary. Um, he started in a band, then he went solo, not by choice, and he had a whole bunch of other stuff going on too. And then they got back, they kind of talked about getting back together because the band bombed without him. They finally managed to pull it together back in the late 90s when the bands reunited pulled them together. Mm-hmm. And they, they split again, and then they came back again, did an album, and then they split up again. So it's like, I get so pissed off because, he is such a great singer, and everything about those two solo albums of his from the mid '80s is are just dynamite. And people don't know what no, they're out there. They know "Too Shy," which is when he was with Kajagugu, and they know "Never Ending Story" because you never hear the end of it. Lamal, I love Lamal. Real name Christopher Hamill. It's an anagram of his last name. He's still out there, still performing, still doing stuff admitted in an interview last year that, yes, he's done chemical peels and Botox and everything to kind of try and keep his looks. Um, you know, because he, he actually puts on the two-toned wig occasionally when he performed until recently. Thank God he stopped doing that. Um, but I loved him from the minute Kajagugu's Too Shy hit in MTV. I loved his voice. I loved his style. There was something about him that I knew was going to be you know, he was going to be up there with Madonna and all those. Yeah. And unfortunately... I'm sorry. The first time I heard Too Shy 
before we got to the line, hey, girl, move a little yeah. closer, I thought that was a woman yeah, well, singing. My, like, my oh, cousin right. thought Boy George was a girl, too. So anyway. I was like, oh, um, wait, that's a dude. I, his voice is just magical. And, and the Never Ending Story is a classic song. You still hear it on 80s radio yeah. all the time. Yeah. And and it's a, it's a shame that America, I mean, both albums were hits in Britain. No, America isn't really familiar with the solo albums. Don't Suppose was the first one, and Color All My Days is the second one. They are both available on Spotify if you've never heard them. And he did some great music off those. I especially love a hilarious little number from his second album, Color All My Days, called Working Out. It's a parody of all the fitness stuff going on. And it's mm-hmm. hysterical. And I love that. He also did a later song that was available on one of his singles in the, in the 2000s called Over the Top, which or actually might, that might be from the other album too, um, which is an acapella song, which he did all the overdubs on. It's, it's great. And I'm like, you have to hear it to believe it. He was a stellar singer and deserved a lot more than he gets. He has a website, lamal.com. You can find all of his stuff from the, from the 2000s that you've never heard. He still got the voice and go check it out because he's still fantastic. Lamal, okay. my number one favorite forgotten musical act of the 80s. Okay. So I guess we're <laughs> done with that list. So we'll, we'll count them up. Count here. backwards. Yep. All right. From 10 to 1, my list is Leslie. Uh, number 10, Loudness. Number 9, Pretty Boy Floyd. Number 8, Nitro. Number 7, Steelheart. Number six, White Lion. Number five, Kicks. Number four, Roxanne. Number three, Dirty Looks. Number two, Extreme. And number one, Tiger Tales. I gotta say, I agree with you about Extreme. Although Wholehearted and um, More Than Words were monster hits, their album stuff was terrific. Yeah, and nobody and, and, really heard it. Yeah, I know. People were like. Porno- Porno Graffiti was a big hit, the album. Yeah. But the other two albums, set first and third, the fourth one you can pretty much ignore. Um, we're, we're well, just fantastic. Well, that's what pissed me off when people were like, oh, wow, have you heard about this new band? You know, and I was like, <laughs> new band? F you. You know, some of us were there from the beginning. <laughs> Don't give me this new band crap just because you discovered them. <laughs> you know. And More Than Words has actually was popular enough that it's been remade twice now. Uh-huh. B.B. Mac did a great remake, and there was an even more recent one with a hip-hop chorus that I was really stunned at how much I liked. And I can't remember who does it, but it was really good. I kept thinking, oh, God, Kim's going to kill them. Um, anyway, my top ten for favorite forgotten musical acts of the 80s are thusly. Number ten, Stacey Q. Number nine, Johnny Hates Jazz. Number eight, John Parr. Number seven, Marilyn Martin. Number six, Boy Meets Girl. Number five, Taco. Number four, Menudo. Number three, Go West. Number two, Ish Ledesma, uh, or just Ish. And number one, Lamal. Um, okay. There are so many acts that we didn't have on this list. Oh, I can no. think of dozens that I loved that I just thought of as we're doing the show. Like I said, Greg Guidry, Jim Photoglow, uh, all these people. Stacey Ladisaw, who took yeah. herself out of the business. Yeah. And I mean, it's like... Me too. I'm thinking of acts too, like Impolitary and Michael Lee Ferkins. Who's the one and, that did... Oh, Michael Lee Ferkins is awesome. Yeah. Who did Over the Rainbow? Impolitary. Uh, that's right. Yeah. That's yeah. terrific. Heavy Metal... Scented version not, of that you song. Have not lived Amazing until you've job. heard a heavy metal ballad version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And it's great. It's, it's terrific. It kicks ass. Um, okay, so okay. your uh-huh. pick. Yes, my pick. <laughs> oh, God. Um, my pick for next week's top 10, uh, I want you to come up with, and me to come up with, our favorite, our favorite top 10 fictional universes. Okay. These can be any. Like, you know, movie, TV, comic books, you know, whatever you want. Oh, God. Um, Don't, I maybe we should leave comic books out since each, each new, each character that has it has like nine different version um, universes out there. Well, let's, yeah, okay, fine. But then it's not a question of you don't have to like live in the universe, but just a place you'd like to go visit. You know, but if living there is your ideal, that's cool. Just places that you would like to go to. And hopefully not get, interact and not you know not you don't but you'd want to you know? interact yeah definitely interact you know um, okay. so you pick ten fictional oh universes my God. that you she can, always pulls these out of her out of her head and I I can never come up with them but we'll know, see what I can yes, do yes I pull them out of my head because my head is a dark scary place full of mice and cobwebs and it recently Ta-da! came out of the other end anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Okay, now. You can sleep in the other room tonight if you want. I could, but I'm not going to. Um, so, um, we have a lot of other shows to go on. We do apologize, as I said. Uh, some of our stuff kind of gotten shifted and stuff around due to the crazy pressure for meeting the deadline of having mm-hmm. Manhattan Hammer Down up today. Um, so, I do appreciate everybody being patient with this. Subject Cinema will return this Sunday. Um, ne- it won't be this week. Next week will be the Sundance show. This week will mm-hmm. be just average movie stuff. No, just average movie stuff and one big ass Oscar nomination and coverage. One big and, ass and rant stuff. from Kim. So look for that. Predictions for Oscars we can't really yeah. do because we didn't see most of them because mm. we were just crazy busy and crazy broke. Um, but it'll be back Sunday. Platinum Roses Garden returns this weekend. Yes, it does. Uh, Platinum Roses Garden <coughs> will be back. That is my supernatural podcast where I look at this past week's episode. And so I will be looking at this week's episode, Wayward Sisters. And I hope everybody will come and check that out over at uh, PlatinumRosesGarden.com. And I hope you will check out my other podcast. Kim just debuted her yes. brand new podcast, Ring Around the Rosie. Yes. A great woman's perspective of professional wrestling. Yes, in other she's words, she's been a that- fan. <laughs> she's been a fan. For, I'm going to say it. Don't get angry. Oh. For thirty plus years. Yep. And she's been. Uh, she's got stories to tell and reviews of the shows now to do. And I haven't had a chance to listen to show one yet, and I, I got to do that. But yeah. it's, uh, So basically, you it have, went up. It'll be up every Wednesday evening. So you want to check have that a, out? You have wrestling perspective from an oversexed person with the. Uh, attention span of your average house plant. So have fun with that. And that is available every Wednesday at ringaroundtherosie.net. Yes. We couldn't I, get the dot com because the person who owns it wanted thirty five hundred dollars for it. Yeah. I would I'm also like, like to stress screw that. I would like to stress both Pla- of those shows yeah. are not. Platinum Roses not Garden safe and Ring Around the Rosie are not safe for work. Because Kim swears like a truck driver. Yay! When we're not doing this show and I consciously make her not swear. She swears like a truck driver. Yay, First Amendment. (laughs) And you have your own show as well. My show, Catastrophe Vortex, will be back Monday. It was supposed to be back this past Monday, but I didn't, I couldn't do it with Manhattan Hammerdown. It will finally be back this coming Monday. New format. We're going to be doing Earthquake, the 1974 classic with, classic question mark with Charlton Heston, George Kennedy. Well, it is considered a disaster movie classic. Okay. You didn't even watch most of it. I couldn't. You watched San Andreas. I, yes, but San Andreas didn't have Victoria Principal and that hair. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Catastrophe Vortex Mondays starting this coming Monday. I promise. K Babble with Eric and Valerie Lyon, uh, with great stuff. They did a recent show, a whole show of K Babble Eats Odd Things, travel log shows, movie shows, game shows, and a lot more, all from their unique perspective from Missouri. Gabebabble.com and Comic Grotto with Aunt B and Pee Wee back on the air with new comic shows, comics, comic book movies, comic book TV shows, and the men who love them all at ComicGrotto.com. And don't forget about our two mini shows every week at East Cinema One, Three Minute Weekend on Fridays with all the new movie releases in theaters, and Tuesday Digidex on Tuesdays with all the latest releases on home video. And uh, usually including Amazon Prime and Netflix when they have stuff to report on. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to get a list of all the new stuff coming on there. Yep. But I do try to have a few each week. Um, I, I, the universes. Yep. I would also like to stress when it comes to these universes and you get, you know, you get thrown in them, you know what's going on. You're not just running around like, ah, what's happening? You actually know where you are. You can get up to speed pretty quick. So. That's cheating. Well, that's like you. That, so you drop drop into the universe knowing you can walk in that police box and it's going to be larger on the inside than the outside. Um. Well, I'm not saying you're <laughs> I'm not saying you, you're thrown in and you automatically save the day. I'm just saying. Okay. You know, fair. So you know what, the doctor is the doctor. Yeah. Well, what if I haven't seen her lately? I haven't seen her at all, except in the very end of the last episode. Anyway. Um. <laughs> this will be fun. I can already tell we're going to have a hell of a time with that one. Um, be sure to join us every week for mm-hmm. all of our stuff. And once again, plug, 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 ManhattanHammerdown.com. We are so... I am very proud of the way these guys rallied together behind this idea. It was, a lot, it was a lot of fun to do. And you it was a lot of hard work. You put a lot of hard work in this. <laughs> and a lot of hard writing and trying to... I, I did make a couple of goofs and I just... 
It's it's Cloverfield, the night it happens, from the perspective of news reports and EAS stuff. Mm-hmm. And I hope you will like it. I hope to be doing more EAS simulations and such in the future. And yeah. I hope that we will have more to do. But we have its own little website for it at ManhattanHammerDown.com. Please go over and check it out. And let mm-hmm. us know what you think of it. Yep. Drop us a line here at Front Row at, at PNR Networks. If you've got any ideas for lists and we use them, we will in the prize. Yep. And we also ask you to please take the time to Patreon us. We have a lot of great stuff. We could have used the extra funds for this movie. Uh-huh. Um, but we could really appreciate it because we have some stuff we want to do later this year mm-hmm. same, along the same lines. And uh, a few other things. We still have that video show we want to do with you that we haven't been able to do yet. No, I know. And it all depends on you. Patreon.com backslash PNR Networks. Donate at any level. There's little perks and... Um, Larger We ones. can defi- definitely use um, And you can also it. follow us on Twitter. You can follow <coughs> me at uh, PlatinumRosell at Twitter.com. And you can follow TC at eCinema1. And eCinema Boston. And I'm on there both with Pop- eCinema Boston TC. And I'm actually mm-hmm. on that one more often right now because we're starting to gear. Although we still haven't yet. T- we're just beginning. In, well, we're actually in the middle of the early fall festival. Uh, fall, uh, early spring festival. Um, Early January festival circuit. He'll get it sooner or later. <laughs> Ta-da! Um, I'm already starting to gear up for Boston because we found out that the Boston festival scene is going to get crazy this year because three of the festivals are the same weekend. Mm-hmm. Salem, Underground, and Irish are all the same weekend. I'm yep. like, oh my God, that's going to kill us. Mm-hmm. So we'll have all that in future weeks, so be sure to stick around. And, and until next time... This is Kim Brown. I'm TC Kirk. And we're hoping we can count on you to come back next week and count up our next list here on Front Row 5 and 10. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Front Row 5 and 10 with Kim Brown and TC Kirkham. Podcasting's choice from coast to coast, continent to continent, right here 24 7. PMR.